what? Your favorite hacker is back with a new Hack the Box machine. And I'm not alone. I have Bulbasaur with me. Fantastic. So what machine are we looking at today? Today we're looking at the backend too. So let me spawn this, this machine up and let's take a look at what it actually is. Because I have no idea what kind of machine this one is. But as always, we will basically create our working directory. Let's call it backend2. And then let's, once we're in VS Code, let's open our folder and we are ready to go. We have a terminal ready for us to work with so we can use different tools. I mean, you know the drill by now, right? And I have the target IP of the machine in here. So let's actually take a quick glance at what this machine is um great this machine is created by ipsec oh uh, then this machine must be really hard or at least i guess so but, but um, yeah shout out to ipsec um do we have any kind of tags or maybe hints as to what this could be you know just doing some osint so this this matrix displays the exploitation characteristics of the machine we have enum real cve custom ctf all right we also have walkthroughs which maybe we will use later on but no this is supposed to be the ultimate walkthrough of this machine so with that out of the way let's um i mean let's copy this ip and just browse it real quick okay cool we got some api do we have maybe a swagger no but we can enumerate oh that's why it's called that's that's why the matrix showed the enum part right so as always we want to do some nmap scanning some just just to look at what ports are open and you should know by now the command to scan all open ports is dash p dash and the IP, we can just get the IP with cat target IP and we should get the real IP. Now let's add some more things like the output of all and just do initial scan. And we also want all and the OS and let's just run it. All right, we need sudo, my bad. So let's just run it as sudo. All right, so the scan is through. Let's take a quick look at what we gathered so far. So we have SSH that's open. We have port 80 with a service called UVicorn, which um, I have never heard of, but let's continue. It looks like there is some sort of API from what I gathered here. I mean, you basically just visit the website and it tells you it has an UH c api let's uhc api in the background maybe we can find some more interesting information here is the get request the same one i just showed you and some things are not allowed and it's application json okay so the type seems to be correct and everything let's scroll further down what do we have we have no exact os matches all right but um yeah it seems like it is a Linux machine. Okay, so we have two interesting ports. One which is the 22 and one which is the 80 and the UI corn. So I mean that's basically all the info that we have. And uh, when you Google for the UHC API, you get a backend two solution, which is not what we are looking right now because we are the solution to this machine but let's take a look at what uvicorn is uvicorn <laughs> is a ascii web server implementation okay but what the hell is ascii a synchronous server gateway interface is a spiritual pro successor to wsgi okay how does asgi work event await receive send okay so it's basically asp for python right is that it oh okay it's a Cython based dependencies so maybe we can exploit some c vulnerabilities 
and it looks like well, but this looks really painful to program you always have to create the json yourself just go with um, asp or java bring but that that that's that's okay now we have some information um i doubt it has something to do with the ssh just because we have this api as well so i i think what we actually need to do in this challenge is find a way to exploit this api so that we can get SSH X. Um, but just in case, let's do a quick rundown and find vulnerabilities for this version 8.2p1. I guess that's the version number, right? Okay, great. So we have already a website that is tricking us. What the hell? <laughs> what is this cybersecurity? Okay, so that's clearly that's the, the version. So let's look for some CVEs. CV is for the remote code execution. I mean, I'm not sure if that's the way to go, but it looks like there is a remote code execution vulnerability in this version of the open SSH server. All right. So let's do a quick scan for some vulnerabilities. Uh, let's limit it to port 22 and 80 and the target Oh, the output would be the vuln scan and the target is get target IP. Okay, this should go a bit faster than the last one. I hope so. Maybe the software also uses fast API. It looks like this is what, what's usually often combined. REST APIs, fast API, SQL Alchemy and UV Corn. By the way, I just launched my Discord server, so you can join in and discuss about different hacking topics, coding topics, or even join the voice chat and enjoy some company with other hackers that think alike. But make sure to read the server guide and rules first before you interact and get banned. The link is in the description. Okay, but then I, I then I, I, I guess I didn't understand what exactly Uvicorn is. So Uvicorn is the web server. It's not the API. It's basically like Nginx or Apache or Express. I think I think Express is the right thing to compare it. So this is basically Express, but if it was made with pipe. Do I understand that correctly? Can someone in the comments let me know what Uvicorn is? Because I've never heard of it. Did you use it? Should I use it? Is this a great tool or is this just... I mean, I don't know if it's a great tool. If it's part of a CTF challenge to hack it to get some remote code execution. But all right. It sounds interesting. Maybe for some of my Python projects. Great, the vulnerability scan is done. So let's take a look at what it found. Okay, so it found a couple of vulnerabilities in here and I don't think it found any vulnerabilities in here. So I guess, I guess we have to attack the SSH server. That's weird. Is this, there's an exploit for it that runs in Metasploit. Let's start MSF console. So let's do a quick search in here. Um, search open SSH. I mean, it doesn't really tell me which version. Multi gather auxiliary exploit. Mm, okay, so it doesn't. I mean, it has one exploit for Windows, but it is likely that it's running on an Ubuntu machine. So mm, doesn't look like it. Called search search exploit and we can pass it an nmap scan um let's pass it the wound scan xml i think it has to be an xml and oh okay it looks like it found something but yeah always the same why why does it always ignore the version i mean the wound scan has the version in it right i mean this this is a problem that we need to talk about dear nmap team why or search exploit team, why do you just ignore the open SSH version? So let's search exploit and then the term should be UV corn. Come on. Term should be the UV corn. No results. Can I also look for open SSH? Um let me do a quick TLDR. 
So let's run search Floyd and then open SSH and then the version number, which is this one. No results. Great. So there are no exploits for both of those things, which means that my initial gut feeling was absolutely right. We need to exploit this API, but we can't do this with the browser. What we need for that is a professional tool used by professionals called Burp Suite Professional. But um, yeah, first let's turn it to a dark theme. Fantastic. And make the font size a bit bigger so that everybody can read it. And let's change it to Fira code because that's my corporate design, right? So let's open up a browser and let's check out the IP, uh, <laughs> the, the API. What was the target IP? Let's go in here and let's go in here and now we have it in our burp and we can say that this is our target so let's add it to our scope um i think that's i hope that's enough and now that i have burp suite pro i can actually run some engagement tools and don't have to do anything by hand that's amazing so yeah burp suite pro looks cool um, let's analyze the target. Let's, oh, actually, yeah, is it, it's, oh, it's HTTP. Maybe let's try HTTPS. How does that look like? Okay, that's an error on Burp Suite because I haven't imported the certificate yet. How does it look? Oh, okay, so we're on, we're on HTTP. So I have, don't have to worry about anything else right now. Um, we found a favicon, okay. Um, I don't think we need to save this. Let's scan why crawl and audit. All right, let's roll. Maybe we can try other things as well. Let's discover some content. So let's run a couple of scans and then we can see if we find something already in here. Maybe we need some extensions that help us with APIs, REST APIs, not 5G APIs. That's finished and um, we didn't find anything so did we crawl it already no all right so it looks like we have to do it more or less manually so let's send this to the intruder let's go to the intruder and what we're looking for is actually here we want to add off and then let's go to the payloads here we have directories short um do we also have something for apis doesn't look like okay i don't think that's gonna be useful but let's start the attack maybe we find one or two things everything is 404 does it work as expected response details not found do you see how much faster verb intruder is when you have the pro edition that's crazy all right but i'm feeling i'm feeling already kind of lot i mean let's check user not api oh oh ah i'm a genius I am a genius. I am the master hacker that you read about on r slash master hack. Yeah, okay, I, I'm stupid. It told me to use v1 and here I go and use v2. And now we have the endpoints. We found the possible endpoints. That's amazing. Okay, then I didn't even need to use my burp. Okay, today was a good day. Okay, it's not endpoint slash user. Yeah, slash user not found ah that's how you do it that's how you use your knowledge as a full stack engineer to hack websites and um, we found a user a super user oh we found a super user so this user is already a super user um so that's that's what you call a lucky punch but not really because um that's a common error you can do is making your first user the admin user so everybody can get it or would there be a user zero no that's not did i trigger a null pointer that's amazing but okay we have our first user we can now use this request to enumerate all the users i know i know i know exciting times we're living so let's send this to the intruder boom and we want to add this one let's go to the payloads and here we want numbers and we want from one to let's, let's i don't know let's try 420 what? and start the attack okay are you, are you are 
Are you trying to tell me that those are all va Okay, null, 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 null. Ah, there was an option extract. Yeah, we can extract the nulls. Well, I think we can just quickly find how many users there are. Oh, 11 users. Okay, so we found 11 users. Oh, this is getting juicy. But this one isn't a super user. This one isn't a super user. This one neither, 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 neither. Um, okay, that's weird. Ah, okay, that's the base request. So one gives us our admin and two gives a guest. Oh, but that's crazy. We can now use this admin user to do other stuff. Um, but before we do that, let's take a quick look at what we saw here when we go to E1 because we have a slash admin not authenticated user list. Okay, not a valid integer. Hmm. Okay, so I guess there is. Oh, we we got an actual error message. Um. So we can only get on this endpoint. Yeah, obviously. I mean, maybe if we use Postman or something like that, maybe curl, we can post stuff to this API and create our own admin user. This is exciting, exciting. But for the next episode, check out this video over here. If you have no idea what I just did with nmap and burp, it's explained in here. So. Watch it.